Hey guys, back in the shop space, I wanted to give you an update on the progress of some recent projects. The first update is switching the cams back over to traditional 90 degree firing order from the Big Bang video. I figured this would also be the time to try another idea that was rolling around in my head, to swap the intake and exhaust cams. In stock form, the intake cams have slightly more duration than the exhaust cams, something like 249 versus 241 duration. I noticed the majority of cam manufacturers for the dual overhead cam 4 valve chamber applications have the exhaust duration slightly longer than the intakes. Not all manufacturers, but most. So I wanted to give it a try. The plan here is to set the cams up like factory using cam locking blocks, then measure how much lobe lift on the lifter face is present at cam overlap top dead center with a dial indicator. I measured roughly 15 thousandths to 18 thousandths lift during overlap then physically move the exhaust cams to the intake cams location and vice versa for both banks. To set up the new cam timings, I decided to go with 15 thousandths on both intake and exhaust at overlap. It's a crude way of setting cam timing, but it works. The procedure of setting up four individual cams at 15 thousandths lift during overlap with repeatable results is a very tedious process. With the cams swapped and the engine back to 90 degree firing order, this brings us to the other part of this update. I decided to explore some other muffler options. Perhaps find something tonally better than what I currently had. You don't know until you try. The current muffler is an auger style similar to the Moroso spiral flow and design made by Kaiser Manufacturing. This time, I wanted to experiment with a set of absorption mufflers. I was on the hunt for absorption mufflers with all the similar dimensions. Two and a half inch in and out, 14 inches long, with a four inch diameter case OD. I landed with the Flowmaster Flow FX, Pipes M80, and a Porter Shorty muffler. I also checked out the classic Cherry Bomb Glass Packs, Thrush, Flowtech Red Hots, and Purple Hornies, but couldn't find anything in their catalogs that matched the dimensions I needed. So here we are with these three brands. Let's start with the least expensive of the three, the Flow FX. At the time of filming, they are being sold for around $44 each. The way the packaging says Flow FX by Flowmaster, it kind of makes me wonder if it's like Squire by Fender. Not made by, but officially licensed by. I believe the majority of manufacturers have gone away from the louvers in favor of the perforated core. One would think this would flow a bit more at the sacrifice of noise attenuation. Next up, we've got the Pipes M80s. These are the ones I want to sound the best because they are extremely lightweight. They sell for $70 each. I know for a minute they were trendy with the Ford Modular Mustang guys. The polished stainless case looks great, and I may end up running these for the long term if they sound good, just to take the weight load off of the header studs. By looking at the design and the internal core, they appear like they're going to sound similar, if not exactly, like the Flow FX, but we'll find out. Last but not least are the Porter Shorty Mufflers. These ones are the wild card, and the most expensive option selling for $116 each. I fear that these mufflers will sound the best. The reason I'm afraid is because they are so damn heavy. They weigh so much, I fear putting that much stress on the exhaust studs and threads in the aluminum heads. The internal core is unique because it is a spiral coil, and the absorption material is stainless steel wool instead of fiberglass. These mufflers are the ones I'm most curious about for tone.
was really interesting. I don't know if the cell phone camera microphone could do the exhaust tones any justice, but I am really torn between the Flow FX and the M80s. They don't sound anything alike, like how I predicted. The Flow FX has a bit more bite and rasp to the note, and suits the character of the car more, but the M80 is deeper and boomier. It attenuates more of the higher end frequencies, which is more pleasing to my ear. I think I'm going to run with the M80s, but let me know what you thought sounded better. Also, for the first time ever, I actually heard the supercharger whining while revving it not under a load. I'm not sure if that's related to the cam changes, but I'll take it.